then the reason as far as starting at the the lowest tier I'm not really concerned about where I start as long as I have an opportunity to grow so um, I don't really I don't really look at where the start is because I, I don't plan on being there if that makes sense what's good y'all welcome to the channel I'm tech bag Trey, and I know you saw the title today is a juicy one all right I went in the vault and um, I pulled out something and what I pulled out was a older interview that I did with a company um, when I was trying to break into the tech industry all right so you know I'm doing something that nobody else is doing I'm showing y'all that real all right I'm I wasn't even gonna show y'all that's why this is like seven months old okay and I pulled it out just for y'all right I'm still um, working on this studio I'm still working on getting stuff put together so hey I'm gonna give y'all this like I was I was holding on to it for you know for something else for something huge but I'm like let me give this to the people um, and the main reason is I've been getting a lot of questions lately around interviewing and all of that and so it will just help me to be able to direct them to this video so because of that and because I want to help that's why I'm giving y'all this video now I want y'all to know a few things this is pretty it's pretty bad uh -huh. <laughs> okay <laughs> so take it easy on your boy now I did this interview this is one of the first interviews I did in like seven years okay so I was super rusty super nervous I want y'all to get what y'all can out of this interview, right? So whether it's just the questions that they asked me, or maybe you can get something from my answers. I'm telling y'all right now, it was bad. All right, so um, I'll I'll try and put some timestamps. That way y'all can kind of move around um, as well. But look, like I said, watch what you can, take what you can from it, and discard the rest. Hopefully you get something out of it. Be on the lookout. More videos coming. I'm going. I'm telling y'all, it's. I'm gonna be a machine over here, all right? I got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things that I'm working on for y'all that I wanna get out to you, but I wanna make sure that it's done right, all right? So with that being said, this is a sales development representative second round interview that I did with a company, Enjoy. So I am getting ready to do a um, second round interview. It is a virtual one, so I'm just recording uh, you won't be able to see their face, but you can hear, you know, the whole conversation and everything like that. So hopefully it goes well. Um, got another one tomorrow. That one is in person, so I can't record that one to kind of, you know, juggle what this one, what questions this one asked versus the last one and, you know, all of that. But I assume most of them will be around the same. I know I have to do a um, mock call for both. so. That's one thing that's similar uh, outside of that, you know, don't know. So anyways, bring y'all along for the ride. Hopefully you enjoy. If you do, like, comment, subscribe. Just hanging out here for a bit. Hello. Hey, can y'all see me? Yes, yeah, hello. Awesome, hi. Hi. How's it going? Uh, I'm it's going good, going good. Sorry for the delay. I was in the wrong meeting room. I guess I set up my own thing. I, I should have just clicked the link from the email. That's all right. Um, unfortunately, because you're 30 seconds late, we, we can't do the interview, though. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I hope so. I hope so. So, sorry, is it pronounced Darcy? I want to make sure I get it right. So, it's, it's pronounced DRC. It's, um, DRC. Yeah, if you think like the letter D, the letter R, and the letter C, if you put them together, it's, it's like that. But everyone calls me Trey a lot easier. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Where, where did you come from? What was that? It said, where did Trey come from? Is that your middle name? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's my middle name. It's it's not because I'm a third. <laughs> that, that, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Um, How's y'all's day know, been so far? I'm good. Awesome. It's uh, it's Tuesday, and I went off yesterday, so it feels like Monday for me. That's a win and a loss at the same time. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, that means they have a short week, so not too bad. Christina, how you doing over there? I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, just flying through the week. I feel like the days fly so fast nowadays, so we're yeah. getting through. Every year, every year, it seems like days and the year just get faster and faster. 
I don't know. Yeah, Maybe it's just you're me. from Texas too, right? Yeah, yeah, big Texas. Weather's nice. Today it's it's it actually is. It's like 80s. Um, there was a little slight drizzle. Um, I don't know where that came from, but yes, yeah, it's, it's really nice right now. Uh, midday it gets still kind of hot, but I think next week. I think we'll max out at like 77, so I'm looking forward to that, to see what that's about. Yeah, it's, it's rainy here and cold <laughs> in Chicago. Yeah, the, um, I have a cousin. He went He came, He came. went out there yesterday, and he was telling me what it was going to be like there, and he's leaving at the end of the week, so I think that's when it's like supposed to get even colder there for, them, for yeah. wherever he's going, so he's trying to get out of there, but oh, man. It's already starting for y'all. Yeah, for sure. Mm. <laughs> Shall we dive in, Tasha? Yeah. Um, let's dive right into this interview. I'm uh, so excited to be interviewed, like Christina and I, to interview you this afternoon. Um, we just hired another person who did um, like a skills development boot camp. It seems like you might have done some course careers. Yeah. Yeah, course careers yeah. with Troy. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, she just started last week, so she's still like drinking out of a fire hose is the term we use with all of the <laughs> new hire like HR and security and things like that. So I don't know like how well she I'm sure she's gonna do great. I'm really, really excited about her. So um that I'm excited about you too because of, of this course you've taken. Yeah, yeah. Troy you did a really great job with it for sure. Um so you talked to Christy already. How, how did that conversation go? Yeah, um, it went well. She she basically gave me a, a quick rundown of um, everything you all do and what you offer. Um, but I enjoyed it. I had a, I had a great great time with her. It was it wasn't you know it didn't take too long, but uh, it went well. I believe, okay. <laughs> unless she told you something yeah. different. I mean, no, you made it to the you know this interview. Uh, I, I see. I see. Believe. Yeah, I'm sorry for the de delay. She, um, it seemed like she just sent me back the predictive, in the predictive index. She just sent that back to me, so I had forgot to do it. I, I was trying to save it because I wanted to make sure I, you know, gave accurate and and honest answers, and literally almost forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, those predictive index fun it just like tells you a little bit about like the way you work from like somebody else's perspective i guess yeah is, it, is what I, I was, from what i saw i was like man this is it's pretty it's pretty there i'll spot on i was like wow yeah christina was your predictive index spot on too um gosh it's been a while since i've looked at it but i think i was a persuader and i don't know i guess i i would be in line with <laughs> all of the qualities that they have so Hopefully, I mean, I was in sales, so yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, yeah. that's the good trait to have. For sure. Um, all right. Well, are the, before we jump in, are there any like burning questions you have, like right off the top of your mind, that you need to get answered first? Uh, not not prior, not before, no. Okay, that's good. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about? like your background and your career path and what you're looking for in your next next role and then let's talk about your most recent experience. Okay. Uh yeah, so uh pretty much right now I am I'm 29. I've been married for 8 years now, but um that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Especially for today's standards. But uh <laughs> um yeah, so that's there. And then, as far as on the work side, I've uh, been, I, I kind of started off in um, big box retailers like Walmart, Sam's Club, uh, Best Buy. I was actually selling uh, direct TV, so a satellite in those, in those stores, and then went to door to door um, with AT&T. And then the last most recent is uh with a company called Devita. They were they are a dialysis company. Um but I was more on the pharmacy side. So uh we had a clinical pharmacy there and basically we were calling doctors offices 
um, and patients. So those patients, they experience really complicated uh, situations as far as medications, you know, their lifestyle change. And so a lot of these patients, whereas, you know, the average person might have three or four uh, medications, they have like 25. And they have four or five doctors that don't always talk to each other. And they um, pretty much prescribe multi like multiples of the same thing. And so we go in, we, we have to first get to that patient, you know, try and get them on the line and go down each medication and figure out what they were taking. And then we had to relay that to the different doctors and really try and, um, you know, they have a high standard for what they do and what they prescribe. So getting them to change their mind, that's a whole ordeal in itself. Um, and then, you know, once you're able to kind of do that, then we get it over to the, their pharmacy to kind of take them off of that medication because that's what keeps them going to the hospitals. Um, so uh, a lot of calls going back and forth with that, but um, that's pretty much uh, the main thing around there. And I, I think I'm missing something that you said as far as the um, start. No, that's, uh, tell me about, okay, so at the Stavitas, um company that you worked for um you sounds like you did a lot of outbound calls but it wasn't it wasn't it was like managing people's like health programs yes yeah so for yeah for them it was get, making sure that they um we got their full medication list yeah yeah you did that for a long time uh, six seven Almost eight years. Almost eight years, yeah. The first team that I was on with Davida, we actually, those calls were, they were a lot shorter. Um, it was actually trying to make sure the patient, a patient was still taking a specific medication. Um, and so, you know, those, it literally, the, the goal was like 100 calls a day because they were so short. Um, but trying to get those patients on the line you had to make a lot of them so the goal if you didn't hit your daily goal which was like 20 or 25 then the other goal was 100 so you made 100 calls or you hit your you know your your daily actual completed goal uh, i did that for the first like i guess year and a half or so before i moved over to that team um i did quality a little bit and things like that yeah what um, what made you decide to change careers and go into uh, marketing? It looks like. Yeah, yeah. So basically, that side of Davida, like I said, there, uh, Davida in itself is a dialysis company, and then we were the clinical pharmacy side of that. And what they did was they sold our uh, basically our technology. What we did, they sold that to a company in New Jersey. And um, that, that company actually did not have remote work. So either we could move there, uh, you know, or, you know, you just leave. And so I definitely was not going to leave Texas to go to New Jersey, no offense. But, <laughs> but um, so that, that's what made me, I, I basically, I was like, well, you know, I have sales skills uh, from the past. Um, I, I did a lot of, uh, influencer work just in between there. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of what led me down that path. I wanted to try something that would give me some skills and then, um, kind of brush up on some that I did have. And so that's what, that's when I, I did that right there. Um, and pretty much that was for local companies, um, with their marketing. Got it. Since then, yeah, right now I actually did a, I started at like a courier business, so um, partner with different, you know, the Home Depot. Um, I, I did dabble in um, Uber as well, but um, Home Depot, uh, a lot of these bigger companies that still need packages, um, you know, delivered as well as uh, messenger packages. So, you know, things that need to be signed um, stuff like that. So it's a courier business. I just, you know, started LLC and, and, you know, independent, uh, contractor courier. Okay. Got it. That's important. You didn't put that on your resume though? 
I didn't. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I did a little bit. Or actually, I, it should be on there. Or is it just on my LinkedIn? I thought I updated it. It might be on your LinkedIn. I didn't. I didn't I'm so I'm so sorry. I, I I literally thought that was on there as well. But yeah, that's. Um, I I I think I know what happened there. I wanted to just kind of I guess the things that pertain to kind of outbound calls and selling. That's what I left on there. So that that's probably my fault right there. I'm sorry about that. No, no, that don't worry about. It. Totally fine. I'm just trying to understand like your your whole big picture you offer. Yes. Yes. So. Going to go take a course to learn a new skill, like as an adult, is a big commitment, especially because you probably already have like other like other responsibilities in your life, and this is like something that you probably had to pay for. I'm guessing it did not get paid to do, um, and you had to you know want it. So tell me about like your decision to want to find like do this and then want to find like a an entry level almost type of job in like software sales. Yeah. So. Um, for sure, after everything happened with Davida, what I just told you, um, that's really when I, I started trying to figure out, okay, what is um, something that's kind of recession proof, so to speak? You know, where can I go? What can I get into that I can really build a skill and then be able to take that skill wherever I need to go if something like that happened again? Um, so I, I kind of found. Uh, the tech industry and then I found the sales side and the sales side I found that because I had I've done it before and so it kind of gravitated towards the sales side and um, then I started going really deep into what it all entailed how far can you scale up and, and really grow with different companies and so um, you know to be able to see that uh, you know you can go from the lowest level and make it to a, a you know enterprise level sales with a company if you're able to show that you can do the work that really intrigued me and, and so then I just went out to see how to get in there and so I've been on sale you know I've been in sales before but I've never been on the tech side so for me um, I'm not about reinventing the wheel I saw that hey there's a course that will allow you to get tech um, tech sales skills and then kind of kind of crack the door open for you to, to at least get in on that side and then from there you can you know kind of grow how you want and so I, I that's what made me make that decision to get in with them and um, yeah ultimately like I said ultimately that's what I, I'd like to do one day you know um, I know that then the reason as far as starting at the the lowest tier I'm not really concerned about where I start as long as I have an opportunity to grow. So um, I don't really, I don't really look at where the start is because I, I don't plan on being there if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So that's really kind of how that works out. Yeah, you know, thank you for sharing that. Um, I have like a, a similar-ish career path and story. I uh, when I graduated college, I went into uh, like a management training program at Enterprise Rent a Car. And because uh, I just knew I wanted to be like in leadership, yeah. and I wanted to coach and train people, and I wanted to. I always like. I always feel that my hard work should be a reflection of how much money I make. For sure. Um, at any given. Um, so that's why I love sales. Um, because every month is like a new competition. It keeps me on my toes and it keeps me on my A game twenty four seven, and it's really fun to me. Um, and I worked my way up at Enterprise to become a branch manager. And they did that for a few years, and uh, I had just picked up one too many stolen cars in bad neighborhoods one day, and <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I was working like 60 hours a week, and I, uh -huh. just, I can do it. So I, uh, I took the parts of my job that I really liked and thought about like my next career path in life, and I really liked sales. I liked coaching and training people, and so I said, okay, let me go figure out like how to be a really solid outside sales rep, yeah. and then go. I. Seattle, Washington, and the tech industry is really prevalent here. Yeah. Um, there's lots of big companies over here. So and I'm like, okay, um, let me go get into tech at some point. So I did the whole like individual contributor, and then I went into tech sales as an individual contributor and worked my way back up, and now I'm here. So this is the third year I've been um, a BDR manager. Been up for almost a year, yeah. um, which is crazy to say because time is just flown right by, but um, I love it so much. It's such like a fun place to work. The 
culture is great. We're growing and changing and trying to become like the best BDR organization um, in the entire world is my goal and have everybody make a lot of money and get promoted. Yeah. Um, Christina is the other, other BDR manager I work pretty closely with. She's amazing. Um, so yeah, Christina, do you have any questions or anything you want to ask? No. Um, I mean, I think Natasha, that your last kind of summary of the job and everything was, was a really good, you know, perception of what we do here. Um, I, I also want to dig into, because it looks like you've done sales um, in a lot of your different um, jobs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sales, I like to look at it as, you know, it's it's not for everybody, right? And I want to vet out to make sure that this is a good fit for you and us as well, too. So just to give perspective, and I'm sure, you know, um, Christy or, or whoever you spoke with beforehand maybe have briefed on this, but you know, this is a job where you're going into making, you know, 80 to a hundred calls a day and 99% of them, well, at least all of them have never yeah. heard of you before yeah. and all 99% of them are going to say no to you. Right. Um, so it's, it's a lot of rejection. Um, and it's a lot of negatives, but on the other side of that, if you can get past the mm-hmm. resilience part of it, you know, you're going to be rewarded. And a lot of people can't, can't take that much rejection. And it, it gets, you know, it's a, it's a real big mental hurdle. So what we want to understand is, and we want to make sure when we're hiring the right candidate is I want to understand why you're going into sales. I want to understand, you know, if you're going into a career that has 99% rejection, why are you doing this? What, 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 what motivates you to get hung up on a hundred times? Yeah, so kind of what, uh, well, Nat- Natasha kind of spoke on a little bit earlier. Uh, it's the competition aspect of it. Uh, I'm a firm believer. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just something I believe. When it comes to the sales team, it's kind of the lifeblood of the company. So, like, you know, a lot of the business that the sales team brings in, it covers a lot of salaries. Um And like I said, I don't know if that's like per se directly connected. It's just what I believe based on what I know that in the past, what certain sales and different accounts, you know, brought in what that can do for an organization. So just knowing that you're on that side of the company, it kind of takes, even though you're still um, an employee and you're still on the liability side, it really puts you on an asset side, you know, without that lifeblood, you know, the company, it kind of starts on that decline. You need sales. Um, so just being on that side, I've always been a competitor. Uh, I, you know, I played baseball in high school. I was on varsity three out, three out of the four years and I was the captain two out of those three. So, um, I'm really one who loves to be on that side and loves competition. Uh, as far as the, uh, the, the hanging up on and the, you know, the amount of time, the calls that you have to make for me, that's just a, that's a part of it. So it's almost like a, a necessary evil. Like if you want the good, you got to take some bad, um, in order to get to that. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. A no is, is not necessarily a no. It's just not right now. Um, uh, so, Hey, right now we're going to you know get you kind of familiar with me or with us. And then later on, when it's time, we'll circle around, and who knows, that might be the the perfect time to get that yes. So that's kind of how that's kind of how my mind is framed around that. And um, like you said, um, like Natasha said as well earlier, you know, on being on this side as well, you can make a lot of money. So um, because again, you're bringing that much value. Value in the marketplace is, is based on what you bring to that market pay, uh, marketplace. So for sure. Yeah, that, thank you for, for giving me a good picture of that. Um, and in terms of just like understanding what the next step looks like for you after BDR role, um, I, where do you see your um, career your projection in the next yes. you know, two to three-ish years or so? What, what are you looking to get, get out of this type of role? Yeah, for me, um, I kind of alluded to it earlier. You know, you said two to three, so... Uh, probably probably not that at that point, but you know, I don't know how your promotion schedule is set up, but um, I my whole thing is get sitting down and really hashing out what what it looks like to get promoted with you all, so that I can do exactly that 
plus more to try and get that done. So, you know, to go to account executive and then from there, you know, the mid market or whatever, however your uh, organization is set up, one day I'd like to be on enterprise sales. You know, um, I feel like if I can be with a company long mm -hmm. enough and really learn what they do, um, that I can get in those rooms and, and really um, bring in big deals later on down the road. So, yeah, uh, the enterprise team or whatever you all call it there, um, that's that's where I, I, you know, that those are my aspirations, I, I'd say. I love that. Uh, okay, so what did you... Yeah, and they are sharing that and looking... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, there might be a little bit of a delay. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Natasha. <laughs> okay. Um, and you loved it, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. so uh, for me, it was... Um, I thought he did a really great job with it. I, it took me, it took me two weeks. It, it, if you went through natural progression, I believe um, it was like a three months. Um, but what I did was I, I kind of, I kind of treated it like work. So uh, on days that I didn't, it, that it was kind of light, or if I could move some things to another day, I, I kind of sat there. You know, I was there six, eight hours. Um, kind of filling up a notebook and, and going through um, every single um, lesson to, to get it done um, so that I can try and get on to get to this uh, side of things, you know, get into a tech company. You did all that? You did three months worth of work in two weeks? So, did I hear that correctly? yeah, but <laughs> it sounds bad, but basically, uh, that's if you were doing like i don't know three hours a week or something like it was really it was really low so i, I think they kind of set it up to where you don't really like not that it's not scary like hey in three months you can finish this course and then um we'll show you how to be able to get in with a tech company but um, it does not have to take you that long. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the young lady who's already with you all, that it didn't take her that long as well. Um, just because it, it, there's a certain, I mean, if you have a, any kind of drive, I'll say, um, you'll want to do one hour a day at least, you know, and even that will cut the time down to, I'm sure, uh, three weeks to a month, something like that. It was just the, I guess the, on the prospecting side. So uh, really digging in, like, you know, as a, a regular civilian, you don't understand all the tools that you can have at your disposal, you know, being on a uh, sales team. So like the LinkedIn, um, the back end of LinkedIn, where you can actually find prospects and really uh, dig in deep to nail down who you want to, you know, kind of reach out to um, and then just actually reaching out. That side was really, really interesting to me. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to walk you through like what our job looks like on a day-to-day -day basis and just like stop me if you have any questions. Sure. And, um, we'll go into, go into the second half uh, piece of this interview. Uh, so basically it's, prospecting like prospecting 101 um, and hunting and cold calling until you get somebody to say yes to a meeting our BDR's number one goal is to book quality wow. like qualified meetings with people who are decision makers um, to a week and have both of those people show up um, we get we have like quarterly um, quarterly goals we have to hit um, we do have different KPIs and metrics. So like Christina mentioned, it's 400 phone calls a week and you always have to have like 300 people in your queue that you're reaching out to at all times. Um, we call that like leads and sequence. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, leads. Mm -hmm. Every day we do various forms of outreach um, and put people in sequences that are relevant um, to try to get connected with them somehow. Um, getting connected with them is like the number one struggle because you re like you make 400 phone calls a week and you may talk to like less than 10 people, um, you know, because picking up the phone is luck and our cell phones these days have technology that says like, you know, spam. Yes. Um, yeah. 
So being crafted, like, it's like a volume versus quality game as well because we do have targeted outreach where you want to write, like, a personalized email. Mm -hmm. But because it's a volume game, you can't let that email take all day. So you have to kind of, like, be really good at it. Um, And then you just overcome objections on the phone. Immediately somebody's going to say, no, I don't want to meet with you. Like, we already have a program for that. And you kind of have to dig in as to well, what their program is and try to ask them questions to uncover a pain point they may be experiencing that they didn't know they had and then convince them to meet with us and do it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Christina, do you am I missing anything? I think she's frozen. No, I don't think oh. you're missing anything. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my connection's low. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, like Natasha said, I... It's not really rocket science what we do. At the end of the day, you're making calls, you're booking meetings, you're trying to get in front of decision makers. You know, we have a high high call volume culture, but also, you know, we we like to be strategic with how we book a swap. So um, we do from beginning to end how to execute on that and in hopes that, you know, hopefully um, you get promoted and you perform well to become the AE and actually close those deals that you're booking, right? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the the um the role in a nutshell but i guess we can open it up to any questions that you have yeah just on on the so like when you when you're talking about reaching out um to the prospects it are the do you all have certain emails that work already are you just or do uh is everyone trying different things um and is it just email or yeah, good question. Um, I can answer this one. So we have uh, company developed sequences that are sent out with emails and a cadence of emails yeah. and like calls and all that stuff is already sequenced for you. Um, and then, you know, part of that strategic outreach is coming up with some of those emails on your own for those high priority prospects, right? So people with your top accounts you really want to get into, you're going to do that extra work to, you know, dig into what what's going on in them and, you know, try to find a personalized approach. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? And then what was your other question? Um, just, uh, if email was the only way to outreach or video and other, other, other ways were appropriate. Um, I mean, every prospect requires different channel, right? Sometimes Mm -hmm. people will answer the phone. Sometimes people are going to be better at email. Sometimes are really heavy on LinkedIn, right? So you have to do all of it. Um, multi-channel approach is definitely something that we're strong about here. I used to be a very big LinkedIn video advocate, so I would create videos and I booked a ton of meetings through there. Um, so it's definitely not just a one approach to get the meeting. Uh, part of being successful in this role is knowing how to do it at all and do it all effectively. Awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and... If, We'll go ahead and dive in because I know we're running past the 30 minute mark here and I want to make sure we get through the exercise. We'll leave some time um, at the end for questions if you have any too. Um, but let's go ahead and, and dive into that exercise. So kind of walk me through a little bit and thanks for sending me that email or sending all of us that email. Um, Walk us through why you chose to do the media um, and, you know, kind of, kind of came up with the email. Yeah, I, I had the... Can you hear me? Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I was trying to finish up there, so I, I didn't want to start before it was done. Um, but yeah, so I chose the Vita because I, I knew kind of... Um, the kind of the inner workings of that side. Like I said, I didn't work on that side, but um, I knew they they do a lot of traveling. Um, uh, all the VPs, a lot of in and out. Um, even in my building, uh, there were 1,200 people just in that building um, on a daily basis. So we've all, we always saw people coming in. So I knew um, there's a lot of corporate phones and a lot of uh, corporate travel. Exercise as well was picking um, prospects that were um, 
decision makers for what we sell um, and identifying those three contacts within DaVita. Yes. Um, so I didn't see that in your email, but do you have kind of a, a breakdown for us there? I did. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't realize I was supposed to put that on there as well. So was I supposed to send all of it to you all? I thought it was just the email. Um, you you were, um, but if you if you have it, that, that's okay. We're we're flexible. Oh, but I do have it, and I can. I mean, I can send them all to you right now. Either way. Yeah, yeah. If you could, and then just walk us through. Yes. What you did. Yes. So uh, I can do that. Um, while you're doing that, I do have to um, say the email you wrote is very visually like pleasing. Um, well, so with this. Nice, nice work. Oh, thank you. That was that was uh, one of the um, huge things inside of the course as well. You know, being readable, uh, the readability rather of your email. Uh, you know, if it's too paragraphy, uh, nobody's yeah. gonna read that. Yep, yeah. um, that's that's one thing that I teach my my newer BDR is to separate things, and I should just be able to skim through that sucker in like ten seconds and know yeah. what I'm reading. Okay, so I just sent it. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, yeah, while that's sending, walk us through the... Okay, so the, the three that I chose was the CFO, uh, which is Patrick McKinnon, uh, because they oversee, like, the profitability and they can give the okay to move forward. Uh, I chose the Senior Director of Human Resources, uh, Nikki Rogers, uh, because there's some companies, I guess HR, they kind of help with uh, reimbursement of employees. Um... And making sure they get it on time and then i uh chose the chief accounting officer john winstell and then the actual uh email was geared towards um nikki nikki okay is the director of resources oh great so this gives a whole breakdown awesome this is what we were looking for yeah thank you so it is, is this in writing uh um, a recall you're breaking down, basically? Yeah. I, from from what I read, that's what I thought I was supposed to do. That's kind of what I did there. Um, just like a, um, what do you call it? Like a qualifying call, uh, basically. Okay. So, so we have some stuff to work with here. Um, the exercise that we had written out, you choose a target company. You explain why you chose them. Identify the three contacts. So you did that. Um and then explain why they're relevant. What is your email, which you sent over to us? Um, so a little, bit, a little bit of this is just um, some extra stuff, but. Um, yeah, see, I wasn't I sure. I thought, a a, yeah, I thought I was supposed call. to create the email and create the outbound call. Um, so that's kind of what that is. Okay. Yeah, maybe you got confused on step four. Step four, we were going to do a little bit of a role play with you live here today. Yeah, but I thought that was the role play. So I was like, well, yeah. if they're, if they're going to like uh, have a call role play, then um, I like scripts. So that's what I, I, I just literally kind of made out a, a, you know, a script kind of. But yeah, I just wasn't sure. So that's why I sent it over. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what, like, that's kind of what I sent over. I, yeah. Christina, do you want to do a role play? Uh, um, yeah. So out of the three, I'll let you choose which contact you want to call. You can call the CFO, director of HR, or chief accounting officer. Sounds like the email is toward HR. So yeah. if you want to choose HR. That's fine, but I'm gonna leave that up to you on who you wanna call. Yeah, we can just go with the HR. Okay, great. Um, and then, um, Natasha, should we choose program-wise or should we just kind of roll with it? Um, let's choose program. Um, so for HR, um, we'll go with a flat allowance. So what I mean flat allowance, DRC, in your exercise, 
you've been given, um, you know, why Lotus is a program, and then it breaks down what programs typically um, prospects have. So that's fleet vehicle, car allowance, or CPM. For this exercise in cold call, we're going to target a car allowance. So just to recap with me and while you have the exercise up, what, what are the challenges of, of a car allowance? Uh, basically not getting, well, the company not getting enough or like giving out too much money or too little. And then for the actual employee, just kind of, you know, also the same thing on that side. Uh, that's what I got gathered from it. So the biggest challenge for car allowances is uh, tax waste. So company pays tax, employees pay tax. With Modus, we make it tax free. Right. So with oh. HR and with what they care about, let's go into a cold call scenario where you're calling me. You know, I have a flat car allowance. Give me the value. And um, yeah, of what that would sound like as a cold call. Okay. Whenever you're ready. And again, just to kind of to set expectations, we're not looking for perfection. I know you you didn't get hired as a bonus <laughs> already. We didn't, you know, yeah. train you yet. So don't be nervous. It's fine. Um, just looking to see how you do and how you um, take feedback afterwards. So okay. um, we'll just run through this and try your best. Okay, well, let's go with it then. And um, so, ready to go? Yep. All go right. ahead and ring, ring me. Ring, ring. Hello, this is Christina. Hi, Hello, this is Christina. Hi, Christina. This is Trey with. Uh, we've actually been working with companies to kind of better understand how they handle uh, the complexities of managing their vehicles, mobility, and location programs. Um, but right now, it's actually our understanding that you um, offer a flat car allowance there with Devita. What was your question? You broke up. Yes, I, I was. So uh, basically, I was just trying to see. We understand right now that you have the flat car allowance with Devita, and so we just wanted to speak with you for a few minutes about. Um, how that is going with you all? Yeah, we're fine. We like our car allowances. We oh. just give 600 bucks and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, right now we actually, we might be able to help you out with that um, just to give you a, a, a little more perspective. Um, so since you did have a few minutes, just to let you know, uh, my goal on this call is just to kind of learn a bit more about that. And then um, if there is a benefit for you all, just to kind of, Set up a quick demo if it makes sense, okay? Um, yeah, but why why are you calling, I guess? Like, what can you guys do for us? Yeah, so for I'm most... I'm getting on another conference call, so I only have like 20 seconds. Got gotcha. you. So really quickly here, for most companies, um, they, pro they provide, like you said, they provide their employees with a set amount every month um, for driving to work, typically between 500 to 800. You said it's six. Um, but what they actually don't realize is there's a lot of tax waste. And so this call is just about eliminating that tax waste um, because what we do is we help you have zero tax uh, uh, waste with what we have here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really busy, but maybe can you send an email and I can take a look at it and see if it's worth our time to talk about? Uh, sure. And now on this email, it's just to um, set up a set up a call with you. Do you have uh, Thursday available at three? That way, uh, you know, emails emails kind of can get tricky. I want to, you know, we want to actually speak with you, learn exactly what your problems are, and it's kind of hard to get that through on email. Um, so, uh, like I said, we do have Tuesday um, at twelve, or if you have Thursday, any time on Thursday will work. Sure, sure, that's fine. Which one? Thursday's fine. Awesome. What time? Two o'clock. Okay, yeah. so two o'clock. I'll go ahead and put that in the All email right. and set up, uh, and set up the link as well, for the call. Cool. Thank you. We can we can pause now. DRC, thanks <laughs> so much. Um, so so a couple. Nice. Of, well, how do you think you did? Uh, 
45 percent. <laughs> I was in the weeds on that. I, um, I kind of mixed in that, like you said, that discovery qualifying call. This is just literally setting up an, uh, setting up a, another call. For sure. Um, gotcha. But that's why we do the feedback. Yeah, yeah. To see how you take the feedback. Um, does that make sense? It makes all the sense. Um, may I ask and back up a little bit? So in your previous roles, were you taking a call from beginning to closing the deal at the end or are you saying you just took yeah no no every um Sorry. everything so even as far as uh everything from when i was with uh direct tv i did everything right there so you know someone was coming in to shop uh i had to get their attention get them to the table figure out if they had cable or satellite you know, set up the whole plan and then close them right there um, with that. Same with AT&T um, and then with the digital marketing as well. It was, um, you know, closing those local businesses. So that was more of a two, three call close depending on, you know, the business and then if they had time. But that's kind of why if I got them on the phone, I'm trying to get extract as much info as possible. That way, um, the next time I did, because as y'all know, it's kind of hard to get people on the line. So when I did get you on the line the next time, um, it was a different conversation pretty much. So gotcha. yeah, that, that was it on that. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I guess with that feedback given, do you want to try a second shot at the cold call? Let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Ring, ring. Hello, this is Christina. Hi, Christina. This is Trey with this. Um, I was calling to see if you had a few minutes to speak with me. Um, yeah, this is Trey from who? So basically, why, the reason for my call, um, we understand that you all have a flat rate car allowance. Um, most companies is between five to eight hundred. Uh, I'm sure you're in there. Our whole goal is because right now a lot of companies don't realize they have a lot of tax waste. With our company, um, we're going to help your employees uh, save on that tax weight uh, as well. So, um, and so really, I just wanted to give you a call to try and set up an, a, a quick call to see if it would be a good fit for you all. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just so busy right now. Maybe in a couple months I can look at this, but maybe can you send me an email and I can read, read about it a little further? Um, I can't send you an, e an email, but a really quick, Christina, um, if you could save, help your employees save on those taxes this month, why would you want to wait in a couple? Oh, that's a good question. I guess I sh should look into this. Let's um, try. Let's. Uh, yeah. We do have some available time on Tuesday. Um, do you have any free uh, at, on that day? Yeah, that works. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I'll send you, you the email. All right. 
he took to the feedback very well. Um, I don't have any feedback this time around. Um, you took you took all the all the notes, so good job, uh, Natasha. Anything from your side? Oh, that was great. Half my DDR. It took him three months to figure out how to have that conversation. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know we're coming up on one more minute here. Oh, um, yes. DRC, do you have any questions for us? Or, sorry, Natasha, did you have something else? Yeah, so I know we're up, up on time, but if you, I have time to go over a few minutes because I know we didn't leave a lot of time to ask questions because we were busy grilling you the whole time. No, no. Much time in. No, y'all are good. I'm okay yeah. with time, too, if you are as well. Start, DRC. Oh, I, I literally, um, I, I don't really have anything. Y'all did an amazing job explaining everything from what y'all do and how you do it. You even helped me out with uh, <laughs> the quick cold call. Um, I, my only question uh, that I was just thinking about as I, I did um, see that, you know, and you told me, you, uh, Natasha, you've been here for a year and then Christina was coming up on three. Uh, I, I was just going to see like what, uh, what you actually most liked about working with me, um, and what kind of has kept you around, yeah, you know. Yeah, I can go first. Um, yeah, so I've been with it's like two and a half years about now. Um, so I think the reason I stay largely is because of the culture here. Yeah. Um, and I think Natasha, you can attest to this too, but um, we have a great culture. My first job out of college was probably the opposite in terms of culture. It was like boiler room, um, just <laughs> sleazy salesmanship, uh, just nobody wanted to share their wins. It yeah. was like, if you're a great, let me just keep all this to myself. And it was a great culture. I love my because um, everybody, and we have a really good mentality around that. Um, everybody's very helpful. Um, we keep the team engaged. Uh, yes, there's flexibility from working from home, but also I think everybody really wants to win. And so, um, you know, I think you just have a really positive culture where everybody wants to win and do well and everybody's excited to, you know, help others out achieve that one goal that we're all striving for. So that's why I like um, it's a good company. We're the best out of all of our competitors and we don't have very many competitors. Yeah. So it's just, you know, the company is going in a positive direction. We're growing, we're expanding. And so with that, you know, if you work really, really hard, you can position yourself to grow up in this company um, and just move up the ranks. And it's up to you if, if you want that, you can grab it. So that, that's why I like an opportunity for growth and just the culture. Natasha, yeah, what about you? Why do you like it here? Because <laughs> I get to work sweatpants work, obviously. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I all, all the same things Christina said for sure. Uh, growth is really, really important to me. And it's not that, I mean, obviously I'm very passionate about our software and what we do. And it like blows my mind that people don't take more meetings with us because we are not sleepy salesmen. We are trying to shout from my mountaintop that I can help you save money and make your employees happier. Like, why wouldn't you want to take a meeting? Yes. Um, so that, that, that's like my pain point. Um, so that's why. I don't know if you've ever worked for like a big corporate company, but change happens very slowly at those corporations. Um, when I worked at Enterprise Rent a Car, um, we would talk about something like January 1st and it would be implemented like next January, like yeah. the following year. One, like Long in time. reality, it should take. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, and here, um, it, it changes. Like sometimes things ha change very quickly and sometimes they don't change very quickly. Um, and especially because our BDR organization is new and is growing, you will experience um, that change. Sometimes um, you'll be making, you know, X amount of phone calls the next day, we'll ask you to do a different number, or we'll ask you to, you know, only prospect using LinkedIn videos or, or something different. Your territory might change. It just, it's the name of the game, right? It happens and you have to be okay with it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And that, I mean, and that, that rings closely, um, to what I, what I did with Davida, um, just, and for Christina, one of the reasons why I stayed so long was the culture, um, uh, huge, huge, pro um, proponent for that, for a great culture. Um, and then as far as the change, we did a lot of what we called, um, projects. And so that was, Hey, we're going to reach out to 
um, these type of patients. Um, you know, now we've switched over. We're reaching out to these hospitals. So um, I do know uh, what you're saying when it comes to change, because like I said, the big company, the huge company was DeVita. Um, we, the pharmacy was not. So we were, we had a lot more leverage when it came to, uh, well, I should say our leadership did. So I definitely understand the, the change aspect for sure. Yeah, it, uh, it always comes from a good place, though, yeah. because we want our, our to be successful. My number one goal is to get you off my team in a year or a year and a half and to get you as much money as you possibly can and whatever you want out of life. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, no, those were all. That was all. Okay. Um, how are you feeling? Do you have any reservations? Did they scare you away? Are you thinking you could do this job? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, as long uh, with the proper training, I I just be, I just have a belief that um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to reinvent a wheel. So if y'all have something that's working, I'm just gonna try and and fall in line and make it work for me. So you know, my voice, but whatever is working. So whether it's video, whether it's phone calls or emails, um, you know, whatever the leadership says, as long as if it's working, I'm that's I'm game. So. Um, you didn't scare me off. Uh, it just told me that there's more than one way to to get the job done. Um, that's a big that's a big plus because you'd be surprised uh, of the amount of you know places that hey no this is the way it's done. Forget all of new age anything. So yeah, the fact that y'all use video like independent companies do that, not not companies your size. So that's amazing. Um, I love it. Um, all right. Why I should hire you? Yeah, I'm, I got you. Just just quickly, I, I mean, no is just not right now for me. So uh, it's kind of like water on my back. Um, I'm really focused on growing with the team. And so any anything that I can do to help, that's really my goal. Um, because I know that, you know, if I do, if I help enough other people get what they want, I'll have everything that I want. And so... Um, that includes the money, um, you know, the promotions and all of that. So that's my whole goal. Um, I, I really am coachable. So I know a lot of people say it, but, um, you know, for me, like I said, whatever you all need to get done um, and you know what to do because you've been here longer than me, I'm doing it. Um, if you ask my, um, you know, from for my opinion, I'm going to give it to you, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna try and do something else. So um, I'm just a, a teammate that wants to help uh, for sure. Okay, I love it. Thank you for your answer. All right, Christina, do you have anything else? No, I don't have anything else. Uh, um, thank you so much, CRC. I really appreciate your time, and um, we'll look forward to connecting Natasha uh, off offline, and we will. Uh, get back to you some next steps awesome well thank you all so much uh christina and natasha it was really great to talk with you and meet you both all right y'all so uh i literally just ended that call um it was pretty intense as y'all saw uh listen i was at lost for words in some of those parts because uh some of the questions that they asked i studied for something totally different so you know it happens um one of the things about overcoming overcoming adversity is uh, being able to do that and um, really pushing forward in spite of. So that was my whole goal there. Um, that was the first time I've ever had to do a cold call in an interview. Um, first time I ever had two people interviewing me at the same time. It's crazy. I'm 29. Definitely should have done that before. Um, so it was a little delayed, um, you know, having to listen and see like the little crystallizations of, uh, the bad connection from, from one of them. And, you know, just the delayed of being, you know, halfway across the world. One was in Chicago and then the other one was somewhere totally different. This was a fully remote position. So, um, everyone's everywhere. So anyways, uh, oh, Seattle, Seattle was the other spot. So listen. We'll see what they come up with. Remember, you always have to have something in the pocket. So I got another interview tomorrow. It's a third round. That was the second. Um, so this third round, we're actually doing the mock call there. 
Um, and then, you know, who knows, by the weekend, I should have some offer letters and, you know, we'll make our decisions. So I'll talk to, I'll talk with wifey, you know, see what she says. Um, and then we'll obviously pray about it, see which direction we should roll in. Cause I'm expecting two offer letters, two. Uh, so anyways, that was it on this one, y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And we're going to keep the train rolling. Keep watching this tech journey with Tech Bag Trade, man.